Good day and welcome back to Chemistry Videos. My name is Clarissa Swordson Unruh and today we're going to practice naming. Now the given in naming, uh, naming chemistry compounds is that if you're given an, a name you should be going for the formula, right? So if you have the name you're going to find the formula and if you are given the formula then you should be finding the name, right? So that's kind of the convention, okay? So if I'm given a name here, I'm gonna be finding the formula of it. If I'm given the formula, I'll be finding the name, okay? So let's just start with the first one, okay? We're gonna, this is gonna take a while. If you feel like you know certain ones, you can fast forward to the ones that you don't know as well, or you can watch the whole thing through, but it'll be a little longer, just FYI, okay? So in terms of chromic acid, let's do number one. Chromic acid, it's an acid, so because it's an acid, I know it has to have H in front. And when I do acids from the name to the formula, I treat them the same way as ionic compounds. So I need to not only know that there's an H in front, but that that H has a plus one charge, okay? Chromic, this part is a little harder. Chromic, you have to basically say, okay, what part of this do I recognize the IC is the important part. That had to come from an ATE ending, which means that originally this was chromate. If it's chromate, ATE tells you that it's on the polyatomic ion chart. The polyatomic ion chart would show you that this is the polyatomic ion chromate. And when you do this, notice that I'm, for those of you who care, I don't really care about the convention for charges versus oxidation numbers, especially in introductory chemistry. It just is confusing. So yes, I know that these should probably be one plus and mi two minus. It doesn't matter. All right, side note for those of you who care. In terms of this, I'm gonna basically cross these two. And when I cross these two, just like I do with ionic compounds, I found out that this is H2CrO4, okay? And I put an AQ after that for good measure because it is an acid. All right, number one done. Woo! Number two, I recognize this. I say to myself, when I'm given a formula, I say to myself, is that ionic, covalent, or an acid? In this case, it's covalent. How can I tell? The reason why is because it has a non-metal in front and it is only two nonmetals, okay? If I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna just take this name off of the periodic table for the first element. The second element, I'm gonna take its name off the periodic table, drop the ending and add an IDE. Let's do that first. P on the periodic table is phosphorus. O on the periodic table is oxygen. You drop the E-gen and add an IDE, which makes it oxide. And then remember that if it's a covalent compound, you need to tell how many of each you have. Okay, so four, and you're gonna tell that in Greek prefixes. So four in Greek prefixes is tetra. So what do I need in front of this? I need to move over my T, two is what I need. My T. I don't know where that came from, sorry. <laughs> my two needs to be moved over, and I put a tetra in front of this. For oxygen, the prefix for 10 is deca. And some people just want to cut off the dec, the A part, making it decoxide. You can do that, or you can put decaoxide. It actually doesn't matter. Some people it matters to. I could care less. Okay, so decoxide or decaoxide, both of those work. Okay, and that's the name of that. Life is great. Let's do the third one. Number three, I look at this. Again, it's a formula. Because it's a formula, I need to ask myself, is it ionic, covalent, or an acid? It is ionic. How can I tell? Well, there's at least two ways. One, CO is uh, a um, metal. <laughs> Took me a moment to think about that. Sorry. CO is a metal. It's cobalt. It's actually a transition metal, so this is going to be even harder than it looks. And then pretty much a dead giveaway that it's an ionic compound is that if something is in parentheses, 
If something is in parentheses in a formula, that means that thing in the parentheses is a polyatomic ion. And because it's a polyatomic ion, it has to be an ionic compound. All right, so looking at this, I know that cobalt is a metal. I name it off the, the periodic table. But I recognize the fact that it's not in the tall parts of the periodic table, the representative elements. It's in the shorter parts of the periodic table, the transition elements. Because it's in the transition elements, it needs a charge. Ooh, that's going to be fun. All right, we'll get to that later. Cobalt, and then it needs a charge. And then I need to figure out what this thing is. It may look like this. It may look like this. Right? Those are both the same exact thing, folks. Okay? This, I, I know that this is a polyatomic ion. It has multiple capital letters. It's in parentheses. I'm probably looking at the polyatomic ion chart for that sucker. And if I looked, I would recognize that that is the polyatomic ion acetate. Because it's a polyatomic ion acetate, that's great. Life is good. All that I need now is I need the charge on this. Okay, so let's go back up here for a minute and do some charge moments, right? We know what the deal is at this point in terms of naming. Don't need to be reminded again, hopefully, <laughs> if you don't rewind this video, or if you do rewind this video, and we'll go back. All right. In terms of this, I need to figure out what the charge on the cobalt is. Remember that I don't know what that is, so I'm going to label that X. But I do know what the charge on the acetate is. Okay, I'm going to actually relabel this a different color. Ooh, we're going to label that X. And the charge on the acetate is a minus 1. If I multiply straight down, then I can say that the sum of these charges has to equal 0. Right, because it's a neutral charge compound. So because it's a neutral charge compound, I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, x times 1 is x. There's a 1 there because there's nothing written down, but you bothered to write down letters. So x times 1 is x. Minus 1 times 3 is minus 3, and that equals 0. Okay. The step before that, if you didn't get, catch this, that would have been x times 1 if you can see that, you can see that. All right. And minus 1 times 3 equals 0. That's the step before it, if, you, if this was too far of a jump. OK? And then I move the 3 to the opposite side, add 3 to both sides to make it 0 on this side. And it becomes a plus 3 on that side. I put this in Roman numerals after the cobalt. And that's done. Life is going so well. All right. so. Let's do number four. Magnesium phosphide, it's, mag it's a name, so I need to find the formula. If I'm going from the name to the formula, then I better figure out whether it's an ionic compound, a covalent compound, or an acid. All right. Let's do a little moment here. This is number one, by the way. The answer to number one. OK. All right. If it's, uh, so I need to figure out whether this is ionic covalent or an acid. Magnesium phosphide, magnesium is, an, is a metal. It's an ionic compound. If it's an ionic compound, you better be writing out some ions for that. So I need to figure out what magnesium is. And then since this is an IDE ending, I'm looking for something on the periodic table that begins with phosph. That's phosphorus. So P, magnesium is in group two, so it gets a plus two. Phosphorus is in group 15, so it gets a minus three. We cross these two to balance the charges, which is the equivalent of finding the least common denominator of both, uh, or really multiplying the two together, and then um, figuring out how many of ions you need of each to get zero overall, kind of this idea up here. So I'm just going to cross these two. When I cross these two, I'm going to get three magnesiums and two phosphides. Fabulous. Already halfway done. Love it. All right, let's do a few more, right? We'll erase some of these in a minute here, but let's do a few more. In terms of number five, I think I have room for this down here. KOH, 
Again, I need to figure out, I'm going from the formula to the name, I need to figure out whether that is uh, ionic covalent or an acid. It is ionic because K is a metal. So not only is K a metal, it's in the tall parts of the periodic table, so I just can write down its name. And its name is potassium, right? OH, when you look at past the metal, I have multiple capital letters. Because there's multiple capital letters there, it has to be multiple elements. Those are multiple elemental symbols, which means that this is a polyatomic ion. Because it's a polyatomic ion, I look on the polyatomic ion chart, and I find out that that is hydroxide. And I just write that down. So potassium hydroxide is the name for that. Awesome. Life is so good. Let's erase some of these because we can. We'll go down to, hopefully you have one and two written down by this point. All right, let's do the last three, which I think we can get done fairly quickly here. Okay, number six. Again, you're going from the formula to the name. Because you're going from the formula to the name, you need to figure out whether it's ionic, covalent, or an acid. Because this particular compound has an H in front, it has to be an acid. It has an AQ on the back, too. We don't ever put states for, or we usually don't put states for things that are not acids. Okay, so you have the AQ in the back and an H in front, pretty much an acid. All right, so because that's an acid, I'm going to figure out what the name of the anion is. All right, so this is obviously a polyatomic ion. That polyatomic ion may not be on your polyatomic ion chart, but something similar to it is. You probably have this on your polyatomic ion chart, and the name of that is phosphate. Little lesson on oxyanions particularly oxy polyatomic ions, right? They have to be oxy anions in order to do that. When you talked about the eight versus the ite, the ATE talks towards one more O than the ITE. So, if I, same exact charge, same exact beginning moment. If I wanted to find phosphite, it would have the P. It would have O's. How many O's would it have? Well, one less than this in the exact same charge. So in that case, phosphate, A-T-E, one more O, I-T-E, one less O, okay, and the A-T-E. And why do we not say just four and three? Because it can be different numbers, right? For um, sulfate and sulfite, it's still four and three. But for nitrate and nitrite, it's three and two. So it's just one more O is the A-T-E, one less O is the ITE. In this case, that would make this the ITE, right? This would be phosphate. Sorry. Did I just say that wrong? Sorry. It has one less O. It's the IT phosphite. Woo! If it has an ITE ending, that gives rise to an OUS. All right, what goes in front of it? Well, generally it's phosph, but apparently to whoever thought this up, whoever did the acid name, phosph sounded stupid. Phosphus sounded super stupid. So they added more of the P back. They added more of the original phosphorus name. And therefore it actually was phos, not phosphorus, but phos phosphorus acid. A little bit weird, but it sounds very similar. All right, phosphorus acid. Um, in terms of looking at this, the way you would write this, phosphorus acid, and that would be your name for number six. All right, number seven. Let me do this in orange. Iron three nitrate. Whew. Back to the little ones, didn't I? All right, so iron three nitrate. Iron three, we need to figure out what, the, what this is, whether it's ionic, covalent, or an acid. This one is ionic, three dead giveaways for that. Iron is a metal, 
Roman numerals in any name have to be a metal in front of it. And ATE is going to be a polyatomic ion. The polyatomic ion, nitrate, you can look up off of the polyatomic ion chart. The polyatomic ion chart will tell you that uh, nitrate is NO3 with a minus one charge. So let's talk about that for a minute, right? So knowing that this is an ionic compound, you need to write out the ions in order to figure out how many of each you have. So that's why we're looking on the polyatomic ion chart and finding that NO3 with a minus one. Here it is, NO3 with a minus one charge. Iron has many different charges. How do I know which one I have? Well, that's what the three, that's what the Roman numerals tell you guys. That is the charge on the metal. So it has to be a plus three. When you cross these two, right? Put the number of the charge down as the opposite ions, number of atoms. I get one Fe and three NO3s. Now the question is, can I just distribute that three in? Can I call it Fe and 309? And the answer is, no, you may not. That's not the way it comes. It doesn't have somehow three N's combined with nine O's that somehow an opposite charge of iron. That's not the way this goes. It has packets. Those packets are NO3s. There are three of them for every one iron. Okay, so you have to put the parentheses in and you have to tell how many of that polyatomic ion is on the outside of the parentheses. All right, number eight, PBSE2. Again, I would look this up. I would say, hey, is this ionic, covalent, or an acid? It is ionic because PB is a metal. It is lead, right? So you would say lead. It's on the tall parts of the periodic table. So you might say to yourself, hey, I'm Scott Free. I could just write down the name. It, it that, sorry, that's not gonna work, okay? Lead and tin are in the representative elements, but they actually act like transition metals, so they form multiple charges. So you gotta put Roman numerals for those suckers as well. I'm sorry, not sorry. All right, this one only has one capital letter, which means it has to be an element uh, from the periodic table. It's a monoatomic anion is the way we would say that. So this is called selenium, if you look up SE on the periodic table. You drop the I-U-M, the ending, and add an I-D-E, which would make this selenide. Awesome. Only thing left that I need to do is I need to figure out the charge on the lead. Let's do that right here. PBSE2. All right. I do not know what the charge is on the lead, but hey, I sure know what the charge is on this SE, right? It's a minus two charge, so you multiply straight down, x times one, because there's only one of them written down, and minus two times two have to equal zero. So x minus four equals zero. X has to therefore be plus four. So you write that in Roman numerals right here. And you get lead four selenide. All right, that was a practice. Hope you enjoyed it. Until I see you next time, adieu.